um, today training. It's about more information about the requirement list, how to review and link the documents, how you can draw up your CE declaration, how you can share the information. So this is the part for today. We explained the invite last week. Now we show you how you can review and link the documents, how we will monitor your requirements on your requirement list and what you will do to create a new technical file as discussed last week and how you can share the information. More information about the requirement list. The idea is that you collect all the evidence so you can show your compliance with the regulation on the list. The categorized uh, A to B3 legislative mandatory and you can see what the fines are and why it's important that you have it on the A category because you have a recall and fine and there's something you can't solve with testing at the end. This is really the production side. So this kind of documents you really can request from your supplier. And now you have to fulfill all the requirements. During working on the technical file, the colors of your background requirements will change. Like here, this is a green background. That means there's a document linked to this requirement. That's why it's fulfilled green with a link to it. And that means that the document has been read by Magit. That's the tool where you can link the document to the requirement. And it gives you a sort, sort of evaluation on the certificate of your document. It means that it's a genuine PDF and all test results, test houses will give a genuine PDF. So why would your supplier share a manipulated PDF with you, uh, which can't be read by Magit? So this is why we mark it green. Blue means there's an invite out for this document. So you're still requesting this document from your supplier. Monitoring the documents and the regulation. There you have the ability to add expiry date to your document. So we can also monitor the document in your technical file. The status you see here on this icon Red. That means there are expired documents or and expired requirements on your requirement list. If you click on that, here you see what should be removed, what should be added. This could be an indication that you should create a new technical file, collect new evidence for the next batch. When you don't buy this product anymore and the status turns red, you can ignore that because at the moment you were buying your, doc your product, all your documentary were there and your compliance was, status was fully in line with the requirements on the requirement list. So you were fully compliant. So then you can ignore it. It's just a notification. You should take action for the next batch. While you are working with your technical file, you can see here the expiry date. That's the base for turning red here. So after this date, your technical file will turn red because there are expired requirements in this case. The expiry date is the 17th of November 2017. And that's why you can declare this one not applicable because you're fulfilling those requirements. Now with your test results and you don't have to comply because you are in a transition period. After this transition period, you have to comply to this new regulation. And of course, when your file turns red and you check your requirement list, the expiry date will turn red. So you now have the indication, okay, this one is now not applicable anymore. And for my new batch, I have to create a new technical file with the newest requirements listed on that. And this one will disappear from the newest requirement list. In some cases, you are working on your technical file and also the status will turn red. That means you have created your technical file in January and with a market release date of August 2021. In that case, when you created your technical file in January, some requirements were not published at that point while you were creating your technical file and your requirement list is not today, up to date. When you open your technical file, then you see this bar. And that means you have to click here to update it and that's free of charge. That's also now mentioned here because a lot of confusion was about that. So this only happens when you create your technical file with a market release date in the future. And then it could be 
that a requirement list is added or a question is added to the Q&A and you have to think about it. Maybe it's applicable to you and there are new requirements applicable to your product at that point. But that's only when you are working on your technical file with a market release date in the future. Also possible is that you have a requirement list and you are looking at that and you think that's weird. Why it's there? Uh, why is this standard uh, listed here? Or you miss some standards or requirements. Then you can here click the button report incorrect requirements. But before you do that, please be aware that you have chosen the right product category and have answered the correct Q&A and have set the right market release date because those could be indications while your list is not complete or while some requirements are listed on your requirement list, which shouldn't be there. If you think, I still want to ask this question, you can here click the button report incorrect requirements, tick the box of the requirement you have a question about or just add your comment here and click on send and my colleague will receive an email in the context of your technical file and understands where you are looking at and in what kind of information you have, what kind of market release that you have set and reply you on your technical file. Review and link the documents. When your supplier has uploaded all the documents, at the end he has two options. He can save and continue later, or he says save, close, as finished. On your side, you will, it will shown as this. A white flag means new documents in your technical file and an open task because it's still not closed. And here you see a closed task, it's uh, done. And also if you have sent out the invite, you will receive in your own email account an email that you can review the document. You go into your technical file, go to the document tab, open the document by clicking on the name, and then you first have to read the document, uh, check if it's relevant for your product, check the picture, who performed the test, when is the test performed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So review your document very close. Check for fill and pass because Magit won't uh, select that. And of course there will be, and then you can tick the boxes. The first step what you can will do then is add the metadata. Metadata is information about your document, like the name of the document, uh, who have performed the test, you can add that. But making a relevant name to the document is, is very helpful for future cases. When you are start reviewing the document again or for later you check it again then then a name that's relevant makes sense add the document category to the document because magic can help you then even better to link the document to the requirements and also here's the expiry date you can add for instance you have a bsci audit report with a in uh, every three years you have to do a new audit for instance you can get a reminder note for that that you have to do because the document expiry will send out an, an email if you would like. Here, the green button, match it. And match it will read your document and uh, read the requirement list in your technical file. This is something you have to think about. This is your article number in the technical file. But you received from your supplier the test result with the test, the article numbers from your supplier. So there's no match between the article numbers in the technical, in, in the test report and in your technical file. And that's why Magit remind you that it's not found and you made it need a declaration of product identity. That's how you can use the test result with the name of your supplier article in it. But even if you have a declaration of product identity and it's already fulfilled, Magit will give this notification. We didn't make the system that smart. And then Magit will show you this. If he was able to read your document, here is what it listed on the requirement list. And this is what Magit found in your document. And then it's only searching for the same things. Like here, this standard is mentioned in this document. Okay, I can tick the box because first, I read the document and I verified for myself, yes, I can use this test result. So then I tick the boxes which are applicable and like here, this is transition period. And you can see, Magit give you this suggestion 
based on the first part of the standard. The year is not here, so you can't tick this box because this is a document from 2011 and that never could be evidence for a standard from 2013, of course. So don't tick this box. You can tick this one because Medjit found it completely for you. And then at the end, you choose blue. Okay, it's relevant, but not enough. Or yes, it's completely fulfilled with this test report and I'm satisfied with it and set all the requirements to green. In some cases, Magic can't read your document because it's a scanned PDF or it's a picture. Now, in this case, it's really a picture and Magic gives you this notification why it can't be read by Magic. There are two options then. You can click here on show and show you the whole requirement list. And you have to think for yourself, okay, this is the exploded view. Tick the box, choose blue or green. Or what you can do is when you have entered here the document category, Magit would give you here the suggestion, it's the exploded view, show you the requirement for the exploded view. Prob he, will not, he will say it's not found, but he gives you the suggestion. So you can say, okay, this was the exploded view, link it to it, and then uh, the, the requirement will be fulfilled. You also have here the ability to report incorrect requirements while you are reviewing your document. For instance, you find standards mentioned on your uh, test report, uh, but which are not listed. You can here send the, inf uh, the, uh, the request to my colleague to take a look at that. In some cases, you didn't request, for instance, BSCI from your supplier, but he has an BSCI audit report and he shared it with you. So what you can do then is add that requirement, link the document to the social compliance standard, and you have an overview on your report later on. You can always go back to documents, but what you also can do is click here and, you sh um, and the system will show you all the documents in the file and also if it's linked or not, and then you go to the next, next, next. So that will save time. Last week, I showed you um, when you edit the status here and set it to reject, this message which you type here, at the, uh, the remark, then that will be an email to your supplier and your supplier also see this as his end and knows, okay, this document is rejected and I have to upload a new document. So that saves a lot of time. Now you linked all the documents and then the question is, is there something missing or can I show compliance to the standards listed for my product? The first step you would do is take a look if you can declare requirements to not applicable. So now I have linked a document to all the standards here. I take a look at the standards that are still open, have a double check if it's applicable or not, because I see an expiry date here and I bring it on the market before this date. So this is the successor of this one. You can find that information with the green eye at the end of your requirement list. So you see this one supersedes this one. And at that point, I can declare them not applicable. Then I have an overview on how compliant my product is on the risk profile tab, or you go to the requirement list and select unfulfilled. You have an overview on what's still unfulfilled and do you, the assessment for yourself. Do I really have to comply to this or do I say, okay, okay for now, next batch, do better. And then you can communicate with your supplier. You can do that in the timeline of each technical file. Here is the upload task for your supplier. And you have the ability here to add a comment, which will be sent as an email. And your supplier can take action on your comment. And this will be monitored in the timeline. It's there for all, uh, for forever. Your colleagues have access to that. And that's uh, a big plus of product IP because he can't see your email, but the notifications you send to your supplier is visible for everyone who has access to your account. When the invite is pending, it has no use to add here a message to your supplier, please accept the invite, because then this email will not reach your supplier. What you can do then is go to the invite tab of your account, select the pending invites and just click here on resend and your supplier will receive an email. 
uh, when he still haven't hasn't accept the invite after two weeks you really have to contact your supplier by phone or, or teams or whatsoever on a, another option because this one if, if no email will be sent when you type here your message now you have uploaded uh, you have reviewed all the documents and your supplier says he has uploaded all the documents so he has called his task ready but you're not satisfied with the documents and there are still some to collect you can reopen that task adhere the message to your supplier that you would like to receive missing documents and click on reopen and an email will be sent to your supplier. This is how the, uh, the email would look like. And this is the site of your supplier. Here are the missing documents with the blue highlight background. And that's listed as a list of documents on the site of your supplier. So you can communicate, please take a look at the list of in product IP in your account. Also, when what I explained earlier, when you reject the document, that's also shown at this, uh, like this here, and he can see here the note you added to the rejection of the document. When you have collected all the documents, now you think, okay, I have all the evidence there and I can draw up the CE declaration because that's applicable to my product. You can click here and you can draw it up in all the languages of the European community where you are selling your product. And for each product, it's different. And for this example, this should be listed on your CE declaration. So also the standards will be mentioned on your CE declaration because that's mandatory. So when you click on the CE declaration, it will look like this. This is a Word document. So you can edit it very easy. And like here, this is uh, made not fulfilled, but it's still open. So this will be listed on your CE declaration. When you make it not applicable, it will be left out on the declaration that you comply to it. Sharing the information. Uh, before you want to share the information, you can use the redacting tool. This is the original document. So that's why you can still read what you will be hiding for the copied version. When you save a copy, then there will be a watermark in the copy that you have the original document at your propose, at your your on your site. And um, the original document will be excluded from sharing. This is how it works. You can read it later, how you can use the redacting tool. For the sharing option, you set on the document tab, this document permission. Here, every document is now allowed for sharing. You can exclude documents for sharing, so you can never make a mistake that you share it by accident. Then you go to the sharing tab and add the share. And at the moment you share this information, you can always exclude documents which were allowed for sharing. So you, at the end, you can always make a new selection. And this is how it looks when you share your technical file on the product tab. Only the information that's based for the requirements will be shared, not your supplier information, of course. On the requirement tab, the requirement tab will be shared as it's shown in your own, in your own technical file. And like here, there's a document linked to the bill of material, for instance, but the bill of material were, was excluded from sharing. So the receiving party can see that you have a document on your site, but the document is not shared. So it's not accessible for the receiving party. On the document tab, he can find the information you have allowed to be shared. Another option of sharing information is using the QR code or the URL link. You can find it on the product tab of each technical file. You have to set it to active, of course, and here on the document tab, you have to set document permission for the public. And now I have made the CE marking available for sharing with the URL link or the QR code. And that would look like this. Here would be your logo, which you have added to your account. Uh, the product information, the information which you have selected to be shared with the URL link and the picture on the product tab. That's how you easily can share, for instance, the CE declaration with your customer without sharing the whole technical file. 
this was the presentation for today. 